Hey guys, more Blakey here and welcome back to another tutorial video. Today is part two in our Unity tutorial series and we're gonna be focusing on a ground check, a way to ensure our player can only jump once by detecting when the player is grounded. We're gonna look at two main ways this can be done and how you can do both. The full commented scripts from today's videos are available from our Patreon alongside a ton of other benefits, which can be found via the link in the description. Now let's get started. So the first method we are going to use is a box collider check, where we check for collision between the player and the ground and the second using a method known as raycasting. Let's start with a collision check. So following on from the last video, we have our player here with a box collider already around it. We still have this square platform here, which we can just rename to platform. And now if we select our player, we have our player movement script from the last video, and we're also gonna handle our ground check from here. So let's double click to open this up in Visual Studio. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use a new function called on collision enter. So let's just type in void on collision enter 2D. Let's change this parameter to other. Now in here, we can check for collision with other objects and we can check for what tags they have and things like that. Now we're gonna give our ground platform a tag when we head back into the editor. And then we can check for this in this script. So what we're gonna do, we are gonna check if other.gameObject.compare tag and then brackets and then quotation marks. And inside these marks, we can just type in ground with a capital G. Then we can use curly brackets to open this up. And now we need to create a Boolean, which we can set to true and false, depending on if we are grounded or not. So at the top here, so we don't need this to be public. So we can just do ball grounded. Now in here, we can just set grounded equals to true. And now back in the editor, let's create that tag for our platform. So let's select our platform here, go to the top of our inspector and select tag, press add tag. And then we just type in ground with a capital G in the same way we did in the script. And then back to our platform and add this tag. So to test if our ball is actually changing, we have an issue here because we can't actually see it in our script because we haven't made it a public variable. But what we can do for the time being is go to the top of our inspector here and there's these three little dots. Let's select this and change our mode from normal to debug. And then you're gonna see a bunch of extra floats and values that we don't really care about at all. But if we scroll to our script here, you can see our grounded ball here, as well as a few other things that are private in our script. We don't wanna see any of these. We only care about our grounded. And this is a nice quick way of checking if our booleans are being changed or not. So what we can do here, I'm gonna drag my player to the top of the screen. So we have enough time to see if it starts off as false. And then if we press play here with our player selected, you can see grounded was false that whole time, but then the minute we touch the ground, it turns to true. But the issue right now is if we jump, you can see it actually stays to true because what we're doing here is we are setting our grounded to true, but there is no way of setting it to false. So it's permanently grounded. So back in our script, we're gonna do the opposite of this function, which is on collision exit. So let's do void on collision exit 2D, change this parameter to other. And what we can do is just copy this, paste it in here and set grounded to false. So when we collide with the ground, we set it to true. And when we leave the ground, we set grounded to false. And now if we select our player again and scroll to our script, you can see it starts off at false. It is then set to true, but if we jump, you can see it actually goes to false again, which is great and our ball is working. But at the moment, we can still double jump and triple jump and as many as we want. And that's because we're not actually applying our grounded Boolean anywhere. So back in the script, what we can do here is where we check for our jump input, let's just add if grounded as well. So if we press the jump button and the player is grounded, then we can add that false. So now I can move around and I can jump. But if I try and spam jump, you can see I actually can't anymore. And that is our grounded Boolean coming into play. Now this seems great, but this method does come with its issues. If we quickly set our inspector mode from debug to normal, if I select my platform here and just copy and paste this, I'm gonna move it up here, then I'm gonna rotate it by pressing E on my keyboard. If I press play now, I can jump on this platform and right now grounded is actually set to true and you can see if I spam jump here I am very slowly jumping obviously this is not what we want so one thing we can do to combat this is check the direction of the collision that our player is hitting so we can do this by creating a new vector 3 so we can do vector 3 and we're going to call this normal because we want to access the normal of our collider and then we're going to set this to other so we're accessing the other game object which is our platform then we're going to do get contact and we're going to get the first contact that the player is receiving. So that is going to be zero. Then we're going to access the normal of this contact point. Now that we have this vector, let's check if normal is equal to vector three dot up. And if that is the case, then we can set our grounded equals to true. So let's just copy and paste this, remove it from here and move it into our condition here. So if the normal vector of our collider is facing upwards, then grounded is equal to true. So let's test this out. So with this second platform here that is at a right angle, we can test this. But before we do, let's go to our player and make sure on our rigid body that freeze rotation on the Z axis is enabled as we don't want our player to be able to rotate left and right. So now if we test this, you can see on our normal platform, I can indeed jump and grounded is enabled. But if I go to our wall here, grounded is no longer being enabled. So that fixes that issue. 
So in your case, on collision enter could work great, but another issue we could face is if your game has slopes like this, you may want your player to be able to go up this and currently, because the normal off this collider is not directly upwards, grounded is not being said to true, meaning we cannot jump. So let's remove this platform. And now we're going to look into our second ground check method, which is ray casting. Now, ray casting in Unity is a physics method in which we can cast a ray from an origin point in a direction at a certain length against all the colliders in the game. And what we're going to do is cast something known as a box cast underneath our player to check for collision. Now, the benefits of ray casting is that it tends to be more accurate and you also have a little bit more control over what you're checking for. So in our script here, what I'm actually going to do is select all of our on collision enter functions. And from here, I'm going to press Control K and then Control C. What this is going to do is comment out all of our code. And this means none of this is going to run. So we're just removing this code without actually having to get rid of it. Alternatively, if you just want to use ray casting, we can just delete it like this. So if I just give ourselves some space here outside of our update, we're going to create a ball function that we can place here instead of our grounded ball that we have here. So what I'm going to do is public ball is grounded. Then let's use normal brackets and then curly brackets after that. So now inside this function, we're going to make an if statement and pass in our raycast. So let's do if physics, which gives us access to our physics class. And then we're going to add 2D onto the end of this. And then we're just going to do dot box cast. And from here, we are given access to a bunch of different variables. The first one being our origin, which is going to be the middle of our player, which is transform dot position. Then it's looking for the size of the box cast. So for this, we can create a public variable. Let's create a public vector two called box size. So now we can pass in our box size here. Then it's looking for an angle. Our angle is going to be at zero. The direction is going to be minus transform dot up. Because you can't use transform.down, that's just not a thing. So we do minus transform.up to replicate that. Next, it's looking for a distance float. So again, let's create another variable. We can just call this public float. And we can just call this a cast distance. And then the final variable we want is going to be a layer mask. Now, layer masks work similarly to tags in the sense that we can give different game objects a layer. And then we can check for that layer in script. So again, let's go to the top and use public layer mask round layer. And in here, we can just do ground layer. And then we can use curly brackets to open this up. And we can just do return true. And then we need to do the reverse and disable this ball if the player is not colliding. So we can just use else return false. But the only issue with this currently is that we can't visualize this in the editor. But luckily, there is a really good way we can do that. And that's using a function called on draw gizmos. So let's do void on draw gizmos. Then inside here, we're going to essentially replicate this code, just change a few things so we can see exactly where our box cast is in the editor. Let's do gizmos.drawwirecube with the origin being our transform.position and the size being our box size. To make sure we can visualize these values here, I'm actually going to take away minus transform.up and multiply this by our cast distance. So back in the editor, we can't actually see a box cast right now. But that's because we have these values here that we have set to zero. So firstly, let's set the box size. So we can just drag on the X value here, or you can just set this to a value. So I'm going to drag this out and then our Y value here. And you can see as I increase it, you can actually see this box. So what we need to do is change our cast distance value here. So as you can see, as I adjust this, the position of our box goes up and down and we need to move this down to the player's feet where we want to check for a platform. We also have this layer mask here, which gives us access to all of the current layers, but we need to add one more and assign it to our platform. So let's go to our platform here and I'm gonna to go to layer. I'm gonna click on it and press add layer and just type in ground for our layer. Then go to our platform and add this new ground layer. Finally, let's go to our player here and set this ground layer to ground. So now the last thing we need to do, go back into our script and remove this grounded and replace it with is grounded with some curly brackets, just like that. So this right here is referencing this public ball. And now if we test this out in the editor, I'm currently grounded and I can jump. If I spam jump, you can see it does not work as grounded is only set to true when our box cast is returning to true, which is when we are on the ground. So there you go, guys. That is two ways we can do a ground check inside Unity. Feel free to use whatever one works for you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to go to the Patreon if you want the scripts, which includes both methods. I also recently released a new game on the Play Store called Tappery, which is also in the description if you want to give it a try. But apart from that, guys, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.